Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this black and white guitar. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'll show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in chat tonight. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so we're going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. You could really use any size you wanted to, but I decided to crop off the image just a little bit so that it fit better on our canvas. Uh, if I do it too long, it won't fit. <laughs> uh, but we're using a 9 by 12 inch uh, cotton canvas. This is the Fredericks Pro Series. Uh, it's got a little bit of extra texture, so that'll make our dry brushing um, a little bit easier. We're going to be using a lot of dry brush techniques tonight for our wood tones and for our guitar. So starting with the black canvas kind of helps give us a head start, <clears throat> excuse me, um, for our dry brushing because it has a good dark background and then we can just kind of very uh, lightly add color to it. Um, we'll go over colors. Speaking of, uh, we've got carbon black, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and titanium white. And then I've got a little bit of zinc, or uh, not zinc, um, unbleached. What color is that? This is glazing medium. Oh, Lordy. I've been doing voiceovers all day for editing videos, and so there's no telling what's going to come out of my mouth tonight. <laughs> we are off to a good start. <sighs> okay. Let me see. I'm going to move my mic up a little bit away from my brush, too, so I don't hit it. Uh, speaking of brushes, I'm going to be using the Aspen series for, since they're kind of a textured, a little bit stiffer bristled, uh, I've got a 12 bright, 8 bright, and 4 bright, and then I've got a 4 short filbert, and then for some of the details, we're going to probably be using our blender, so this is a um, 3 3 8 inch and quarter inch blender from the Velvet Touch. Um, all these brushes are Princeton brand. And then I've got a script liner. So you're going to need something for our um, guitar strings. Um, we're going to use a, a, a ruler to make them a little bit easier since they're so long. Um, so having a long, uh, longer bristled uh, brush like this, the script liner will help us. This is a two aught script. Um, I've also got a two round in the 6100 series and then a quarter inch and three eighths inch angle and a number one round. So we'll see. We may not use all of those, but um, those are the ones that our sponsors. set aside. Yes, thank you to Fredericks and Princeton, our sponsors. Um, okay, let's just jump right in. I've already put on my um, design here. I, um, I'm not going to try to draw this tonight because we're Tuesday nights. We try to keep it shorter so, <laughs> so um Good but you can hungry. you can um use a um i think i got this photograph off of a royalty free site so just uh you know google guitar um free free photo and it'll probably show up or you can just take a screenshot of the front um video but i'll have the traceable for you but i'm just saying if you want to draw it yourself or transfer it trace, trace it oh my gosh i've got a fly that keeps landing on my legs driving me nuts oh okay this water just in case because he was doing it to me earlier oh my gosh it's dry it's like ugh. okay sorry give me the eebie-jeebies here <laughs> i can't concentrate <laughs> going to start out with a little bit of brown. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of warmer tone to our grays just to have um, a little bit of brown in there. And um, I may not use the blue. I don't know. We'll see. God, fly. Stop. And it, what I want to do is kind of just run through here. And I've used the um, fluid acrylics because uh, they work a little bit better when you're um, doing dry brushing to have it like a fluid acrylic will kind of come off your brush a little bit easier so i'm going to just kind of i kind of did a darker oh he waited for you to leave and then he landed on my foot again <laughs> oh i see him don't move okay get him get him oh. yay yes there was we, much rejoicing we captured him and we released him <laughs> we released him to another dimension All right okay Check, check, check. So, 
I've mixed up the burnt umber and black here and a little bit of it over here. And then I've got some white in the middle and like varying shades of it. And I'm going to go ahead and just start up here and do my wood tone, which wood trim on my door. And I'm using an eight bright to start with. And I'm going to very lightly, oh, that's way too, way too thick with paint. So that just means I have too much paint on my brush. I'm going to wipe that off. There we go. Hey, better. That's the look I'm going for right there where it's breaking up a little bit. Now, I don't I'm not going to worry about where I did it a little bit thicker because I can go back over with my black if I need to. This area is actually, um, if I look at it with my value finder, it's in the this tone. So I really want that area to be kind of fairly light when it when we're finished with it. So I'm going to start out kind of dark and work my way up and add more and more layers until I get the lighter tones that I want. And those will be the last thing we add. Now, while you're using a, a royalty-free picture, mm -hmm. I'm sure people have guitars or have family members sure. who have guitars, and yeah. they may want to substitute and paint in cool. theirs. Yeah. And so these techniques will work. Absolutely. I sold mine. We sold yours cheap. Yep. You should have. It wasn't. Held it, out for a little bit better, but. No, I didn't pay much for it to begin with. It wasn't a Stradivinsky or anything. Yeah, but like it that. was like. It was like. 20 years. Pretty old. <laughs> what are you saying about me I'm exactly? Just saying, well, maybe it was like a, you know, vin you maybe get extra for it for sure. being vintage. Oh, I should have sold it as... Because vintage stuff is more valuable. As mid-century. Right. Okay, so there we go. Um, nice. I'm not going to do too much as far as, you know, details yet. I might go back in and add some little, you know, wood grain textures. But um, I'm going to leave a little space here and then do my little inside of the door. I'm trying not to go over my guitar itself too much. So, hello to everybody. Yes, sorry for the fly drama earlier. <laughs> <laughs> if you're Courtney, Courtney, I hope there'll, Courtney's not watching. There'll be no counseling. She, she uh, likes to catch and release. But anyways, daughter, daughter -in -law. <laughs> we're glad you're here. Yes, we are. We're going to be in a silly mood. I am tired. I was up till two and just, yeah. Been going all day. Been going all day. And then before the show, Mark was like, we uh, could be worse. We could have a real job. I'm like, okay, what is my job exactly in your mind then? <laughs> to me, it's pretty real. <laughs> That's okay. So now I see what he thinks where art falls in the job reality. Okay. There's people who actually do like physical Don't labor. Try. Don't even try to like back out. Oh, physical labor. It's, it's oh, something okay. that we say at work. It's like, you know. We sit behind desks all day and work on computers. And I see. Well, it has its own brand of stress. It's not like a real job where you're going out and, and like, I pass by the highway guys that are resurfacing the roads at five mm -hmm. in the morning. Okay. Okay. So there's that. That's a real job. 
<laughs> now, you might be vid- editing videos at five in the morning, but you're not in the <laughs> rain or anything like that. So true, true. So you're just like physical hardship is the is the milestone for a real job. Mostly, yes. <laughs> okay. And dealing with bosses. I I'm my own boss, and I'm the worst worst boss ever. Time, I'm time stamp that, please. I'm super picky. We are. So I am, no, I'm talking about I'm hardest on myself. Oh, just hard on you. You're the, I, okay. I'm, I'm really easy going with other, with other people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting advice in a chat to stay quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully <laughs> you've already liked, given a thumbs up, <laughs> subscribe to this channel. <laughs> I don't know why they'd subscribe anymore if we just insulted like 90% of the population. <laughs> it doesn't work day labor, labor jobs. Okay. Moving on here. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay, so just kind of very light. This is just kind of a matter of like very light touches. I think that that's the key with this, these techniques here. I'm not um, just trying to really lightly kind of add some of this texture here. And I'm going to go back in and kind of edit some of this and... Um, add shadows and things but I'm just trying to kind of get my my lines right at this point I'm gonna get bring this out a little bit more the edge of the door right here and then there's a little bit of trim right here that's kind of dark all the way around so I'm trying to kind of leave that so that I have I don't want to cover up my dark areas too quickly because then I, can, you know, I'm gonna have to put them back in later if I have if I do that. So, All right, then this right across from here, actually just above it, so right where this the dark would be coming down, right in here somewhere. I'm gonna do straight down. So. This part right here is going all the way across underneath, you know, behind the guitar. And then the two down pieces are attached to it. And then there's this little insert section in the middle there. And then there's going to be this dark area kind of trim around it. I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. Okay. And then this is all pretty shadowed right here. So I'm just going to kind of drag it and start at the top where I want the color of the brightest. And then just, I'm not, I'm not following it down, if that makes sense. I'm setting my brush down and just pushing it. So that, that makes the bottom edge fuzz out on me. And then that way I get this long graduated kind of thinning line that goes down into nothing. Okay. I'm going over it with a little bit of black because I got it kind of light here. And then maybe let's at the top get a little bit of the light color and just go over. go and go down to about right here with that light area I know Mark's being really quiet now he's just I'm, I'm catching up on everybody coming in saying hi hi here let me show what I did to yesterday and today I'm pretty I think it's really cute that's gonna be the kaleidoscope a Ooh. difficult color video. So that's what I recorded yesterday and edited 
until 2 a.m. And <laughs> more today. <laughs> and then more today. <laughs> so that that's part of the, if you are new to um, our videos, that's a, that's a project, a side project that's not involved in YouTube at all. Um, that we're, It's all over my social media, so if you want to check it out, you can go to my Instagram or Facebook and you can find more information about it. But it'll be running this summer starting in August, so I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, go check really it excited out. excited about it. Sign up for the taster. Yeah, the, yeah. right now they're running a taster week. Our free video is going to be a monarch butterfly um, tutorial, and it's going to start on uh, June 17th. And we're running a giveaway um, the day before. We're going to start a giveaway, so be sure. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, um, there's a special spot to enter the giveaway on my newsletter. So if you go to my website, it's uh, thankfulart.com. And there's a free stuff. It says free stuff up in the upper Ooh. corner um, or like just free. anywhere. Yeah, anywhere on the website that you sign up for my newsletter. It'll enter you for the giveaway. And uh, there's a little box to click if you want to enter the giveaway. So. Very nice. And you get a bunch of free stuff, too. So there you go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> All right. I think. Trying to see where we're at here. Okay, so that's right across here. I'm gonna this is gonna dry out pretty quick here because I'm using fluid paints and I'm spreading it pretty thin on the palette. So either just spray it pretty often or just kind of know that you're gonna have to add more to it fairly often too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my ruler so they get these. How about that? So they get these kind of in the right spot there how's that this is like we, history in the making we are we're being professional today so uh you said that you painted the uh, canvas black at the beginning all right and you recommend to always paint your canvas black even if it is a black canvas right yes and that reason is because um our shadow areas are we're leaving some of these shadow areas blank and then we're going to be glazing and doing other things in here. And the colors won't match. So the black that we use to glaze is not going to match your black on the back of your canvas, um, the back, the black canvas. It's never quite the same. Black gesso is a little chalky, um, so it'll be slightly gray, um, and it won't be as deep as this black black here that we're using. So. And if you make a mistake and have to redo it, you paint it over with black, and then you would see that it doesn't match. Exactly. Yeah, that too. Uh, you notice I always go for the mistakes because that's what I do. <laughs> that's your specialty. <laughs> that's what I excel in in art, <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> so over my channel, we can just have all mistakes. Don't you realize, you, you obviously never watched Bob Ross because he said there's no mistakes, only happy accidents. Bob Ross never watched me. Okay. Mm -mm. Exactly, so... I think he was wrong. Okay. <laughs> the whole premise behind his entire business model mm -hmm. is incorrect. <clears throat> Only when it comes to Mark Anderson. Correct. Just like a little disclaimer off to the side. It says, <laughs> oh, is that what that fine text means? Happy. <laughs> Applies yeah, to all, but. Happy accidents, except, except for Mark Anderson. <laughs> Unless you're Mark Anderson. That's it. <laughs> check so somebody asked if they've already signed up for the newsletter are they still eligible for the yes giveaway? but i would go ahead and sign up again just to make sure that you you get caught in that um giveaway um thing so it won't send you two emails just use the same email obviously <laughs> um it, it'll you know it but it'll it will kind of that way you'll get registered so just in case, because um, it's not going to automatically register you for the giveaway. And we'll have more information about the giveaway next week. So I'll have links and things, too, once it starts. But, yeah, if you want to get a head start on it, by all means. All right, so I've switched to the bigger brush. This is the 12 Bright, just because I've got a large area here to work with. And I'm going to come up fairly close to that and just, oh, that's good. I'm happy with that. So that's... Good. So I see I did better on this one, getting it not too not too fluid, not too much paint on my brush. And that way I get these really good streaks here. 
happening. Okay. Go back over some of these to add some streaks over the top. Okay, I think that's good. So then this one is all this way. So all these streaks are going this way. And really, um, ideally, you just wait to put on your guitar or trace it on and then know, you know, you can go over the top of it in places and then um, transfer back on your design after the fact if you need to, if you've got any areas where you've covered it like there. And that way you've got smoother lines going all the way through and they match up. All right. Get more of the white. A little bit more brown. I definitely like this warmer gray that we're getting using the whites. I think it's prettier. And I've got a shadow that's going to be happening here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I want this wood grain underneath. And so in order to do the wood, have the wood grain working, you know, all the way across um, underneath our shadow and showing through our shadow, we have to do this part first and then we'll glaze the shadow on afterwards. Okay, so let's see. All right, I think I did okay. Yeah. using the edge of my brush to create those kind of swirlies that I'm seeing right in here in my wood grain. Now this is the second coat. So technical word. Swirlies. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I'm not sure. They probably do have a have a name. No, I think that's what it, the botanists that's call it. Really? Okay. Yeah. The wood swirlies. Yes. Okay. Check. Yeah, when the uh, forestry guys are out there, they're always talking about swirlies. So mm -hmm. that's what they mean. <laughs> Not to be mistaken for the flushing swirlies, right? <laughs> I was wondering how you were going to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same thing. No. let that dry because I was still wet right there so I was just gonna lift in the color instead of laying down new color all right uh, I definitely think I'm gonna want a little bit more um, highlight so when I'm switching to a smaller brush this is the um, short filbert number four and I can use this now to add my swirlies and things um, with the tip of the brush so just kind of mm, I don't know if I like that. Probably need to use a smaller brush. Thank <laughs> you. 
to let that dry completely. It's just it's just not laying down correctly for me. This could be the trap that, that people fall trap. into, trying to work it and rework it mm -hmm. instead of just letting it. Unless, yeah. I'll just let that set. I'm not going to mess with that because it's going to dry. Okay, but I am going to go up in here and add a little bit of highlight right along this edge right here. Very light touches. And then right here, right along that border right here. There's a really bright little highlight right there. It's bright over here, but it's in the same general area. And then there's a bright, whoops, a little bit off there. There we go. Highlight there. Use a different brush. This just is not quite working for me for these swirly things that I'm wanting to do. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. This is a much smaller Filbert, the quarter inch blender. I need like just smaller little areas. So getting my highlights going over some of these areas to add a little bit of detail to my wood. There we go. And just make sure that you're following that curve or whatever it is you're trying to create all the way up so that it has a kind of beginning. It doesn't start in the middle of the wood and then the wood around it is, is going to come down and kind of meet together. Create these shapes around it. I'm still keeping it pretty dry brush so that it's sort of faint and weathered looking. I'm not going in too harsh with it. It looks amazing. Thank you. And the painting is along good too. <laughs> I forgot 
you were doing a video there. Sorry. <laughs> I feel like this line is not quite right here. I think it's out a little too much. So I think either this line is off or this line is off. Let me see. Yeah, I think that needs to come in. See how that's, let's line it up with that there. And then this should kind of meet up with it. So let me get my black and I'm just gonna go along here, my black. Now we'll kind of edit that whole section right there. There we go. And do it right here. Oh, that one's okay, I think. Actually, I think it kind of comes down more straight. I think that's the problem. Because this one's more straight here. This is black that I've got here. So I'm just trying to edit my shadows here a little bit. There we go. This one's not as dark right there. But this one's pretty dark right here. Right there, okay. And then, I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit right here. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. I think, maybe. Or we'll just say the door was made by Mark. Uh -huh. pretty neutral and then where they come up just sort of try to merge them with something that's already coming down does that make sense
and curve in a little bit. Okay. This way, I've got some kind of just start a kind of a U shape there, and then I'm going to come up right next to it and do another one. Just try to follow that same shape, however, whatever you you know create there, and then just merge these coming off with other parts of the wood that we've already done. If you need to, you can go back in with the darker in between. And even these sections have like a little bit of variation. So sometimes they have lines coming through them that are, you know, this way where the wood is kind of split or so they're not. I don't think any two swirlies are the same. They're kind of like snowflakes. <laughs> so don't be too concerned about if it doesn't match exactly. Yes. Good, good thought. Let me go a little engineer on you. These are also known in some parts of the world as knots. I think these are knots. These are whorls. I think they're, Ooh. I think honestly they're called whorls. Because the knots would have a round, you know, like hole, right? Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> and you are still using the quarter inch blender? Yes. yes. You call it a whirl? Whirl, whirl, W H O R L. Mm. No? Mm. Uh, maybe. I think the wood whirl is more how the wood changed growing direction and got twisted on itself. Maybe, but I mean, Take a, look, I at, look, for, look up Google Images Whirl, Wood Whirl. <clears throat> what do you think I'm doing over here? Okay. <laughs> I can, it, Maybe it does, it's just the grain. It yeah. does show knots on there and it does show kind of swirly like up here. It's probably just called the grain. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. So we're taking a little bit more time with the wood today because it's sort of our focal point. But if you want to do it more simply, you can just kind of do the first layer and call it good. You know, you don't have to go back in here and do all this stuff that we're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and do some brighter. 
so, right through it. So the definition of a wood whorl is a circular growth of branches at the same height around the trunk. Okay, so maybe, I don't know. Is that what this is? I, pfft, you got me, I don't know. Okay. You got me questioning everything now. I never knew there was such a thing, but I don't read, so that makes sense. <laughs> A world, that's not it. That's a made up word. <laughs> He's not kidding, he doesn't read. He knows how to. I should just make a caveat there. He knows how to read, he just doesn't do it. Even when he's looking for things, he just edits out the reading part, just looks, looks for the actual images. That's, that's why God made pictures. <laughs> no, we got time to stop and read anything. Wow. <laughs> that is just a whole waste right there. <laughs> All right. So there we go. I don't know. These look a little bit smooth to me, like a little slick, but I think they'll, they'll work. Well, let's get going on our guitar here. Um, Actually, we got to do this part really quick. Uh, I think I'm going to use the flat brush for this, or the round brush, I mean, number two. And maybe just go a little bit more brown with this. Just, you know, since it's like a little different. So a little bit of burnt umber, and it's dark over here on this side, so I'm going to this part mm, more black it's not quite black but it's it's pretty dark and and this side of it is fairly light and the rest of it is all in here I'm gonna leave just the slightest little bit of of space between the raised part here and then I'm going to get some white and just fill this in with like swirls it's kind of a rusty metal looks like so there's kind of an uneven texture So at what point of the show do we want to talk about your uh, your mail today? What? What mail? What mail? What are you talking about? <laughs> my my merging beauty salon business, side business? I was going to say, yeah, you got a side saying, hustle. Yeah. <clears throat> you would think with as much... Um, Nail accoutrements I'm accumulating. It's, uh, yeah. But in my defense, I just got a bunch of new colors and I had to make a whole new color chart. And then, like two days later, I went and bought a bunch more colors and now they won't fit in my color chart in the right order. So in order to, this is my nail polish, by the way. All right, I'm gonna get the black here and just fill in this keyhole with the black. So in order to um, keep it so like I can, I can just add as many paint colors as I want to without having to worry about my color chart, then I got myself like little nail tips to paint, like they have at the beauty salon. Mm -hmm. Problem solved. Now, when I get a new color, I just take it off the thing, put it, mm -hmm. put it into place, and it can jump line all at once, and we're done. Okay, getting some white here. 
sorry, talking about other things, getting a little bit of white. This is just going to outline the cue hole. There'd be a little highlight kind of where the, oh my, this brush is not good. Look at it sticking out. Let's not clean that. But yeah, the side camera picked that up pretty good. I <laughs> That brush yeah. looks pretty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty gnarly. Huh? It's going in my in my old pile. Okay, so hopefully the new. This is the new one, and I didn't ruin my new one. The first time I used it by not cleaning it right. That happens when the well one of two things. It's either like it's an older brush, and sometimes they just start to wear out and do that. Or I have not cleaned it out properly, <laughs> which also happens. So, <laughs> all right, it could be either one. I don't, I don't know which. Okay, so now I've got that white on there. I'm just gonna kind of go back over. It's a little bit more of a brown wash. It's just got a little bit of white, or a little bit of the burnt umber in here. And it'll just kind of glaze over that. Okay, very good. Now to add our shadow, because um, I want to do that before I put my guitar in, I think. I'm going to get my black and my glaze. And I think I'm going to, I'll go ahead and use this brush. I think this is the eight bright, but I want mostly glaze. So just a little bit of color. And I'm gonna get some water too, because I want it pretty fluid. So I want to be able to move pretty quickly here and have a paper towel or uh, I'm gonna put a glove on because I want to, rub through that paint. I don't want to get it on my hand. Okay, so our shadow is going right here. It goes to this corner here. It's kind of heading from here to there. That's the angle and it's kind of mirroring this angle here. So I'm just going to slowly build it up. If I get it too heavy, I can just kind of rub off the edges. So it's really subtle. And I'm just going to continue to add more black until I get it as dark as I want it to be. And then go back in the middle part, add a little bit more black. I got it a little too out. There, but see that? Now we've got all that nice um, wood grain still showing. So you don't want it this dark enough that it's covering your wood grain. That's not what we want. And then I'm going to just continue to go around the outside of the guitar. I kind of did a pretty good job over here of kind of keeping it about the same distance away from the guitar all the way down. And on the outside edge, just use your finger and smudge it. See that? Oh, now I got a nice guitar shadow here. And if this area is not dark enough down here, then this is where, you know, go ahead and add the black back in down here. But there we go. Um, Okay. 
And for the inside of the guitar, it's pretty pretty light. So I'm gonna use mostly the white, a little bit of the burnt umber and black here. And these stripes are coming down this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of mostly fill in here, but leave just a little bit of that black showing through, but these lines are going down at this angle right here. And what we can do is we can, I'm just gonna go in and do it with this lighter color. And then we'll fill in the streaks over the top. Since most of it's light, it's just gonna be a little easier to do it that way, I think. Was pulling in the direction that I'm seeing these lines in my guitar so that I'm getting these streaks they're gonna kind of go along with the angle that I'm wanting these streaks to go in our guitar dry. It's not going to accept the streaks very well right now. So let's keep on going here. I'm trying to jump the gun here and add my details on top, but I need to just do this first layer first and then we'll add our details later. And if you're um, struggling with like the direction to do this, these streaks, they should they should follow this line. So um, just make sure you know you keep that line there all the way up. That kind of matches the neck. So those of you who follow along, we picked our first 10 blueberries Yes. the other day, and they were yummy. They were delicious. And we 
had salad last night with strawberries and right. blueberries and things like that. And so we were each allotted two, two blueberries, two blueberries <laughs> for the salad. And I like very carefully put both of my blueberries on top and then I forgot about them and mixed them in. <sighs> so I was never more disappointed with myself. So what did your husband do? He let me borrow. He, met, he let me taste one of his. There you go. Because we, so we did a taste test because we had bought some at the store. And to compare the store-bought versus the backyard grown in. They were a lot yummier. Yep. Yes, your husband's sweet. He was very nice. And let me taste the difference. So, so far we've got some small onions and yes. some blueberries. Yeah, that's our garden. This year's mm-hmm. so, been pretty pathetic. <laughs> oh, and like six lettuce leaves. Yeah, yes. And I do have some little baby tomatoes that are going to be ripe uh, probably within a couple weeks, I would say. But my big tomatoes literally just went in last weekend. <laughs> Or the weekend before, so they're going to be a while. It's probably going to be July before we have tomatoes, big tomatoes. So people who stepped away briefly, they're wondering, are you trying to make an artistic statement by wearing the glove, or what is the dealio? Oh, I, I was, I was uh, using my finger to blend out the edges of the black hair, so I put it on so I didn't get the paint on my skin. I'm trying to... Um, Skin's been kind of reactive lately to different things, so I just wanted to make sure I'm not bringing it in contact with the paint if I don't have to. There's some of these long streaks here I'm just doing with the lighter color. There's, It's not a, got a lot of grain, it's just like a very light I don't know what kind of wood this is. Probably maple or something. Maybe I don't know what kind of guitar. What kind of wood do they make guitars out of? I guess they could make them out of any good wood, right? Yeah, but I don't know if there's like a preferred kind. Always reminds me of our friend who passed away this year, Bruce, who made guitars from scratch. His guitars were beautiful, gorgeous. Yep. We never did. Could afford one. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just did them for special, just for a hobby. I don't think mm. he was selling them really. Right. I saw a video on YouTube once about somebody who made um, a guitar out of colored pencils. Did you see that one? Yeah. That was pretty cool. They stacked it, stacked the colored pencils, and made um, and glued them together with resin, and then they cut the guitar shape out of it and stuff. It was pretty, pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, it was an electric guitar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So fairly happy with that. Um, sorry for the dog barking in the background. It probably just means we have a neighbor walking by trying to... Or a bunny in the front yard. True, that could be the bunny. Yeah, we do have a, a bunny that likes... To, <laughs> I think he not, I think he's like a little devious bunny, I don't know. Because he sits right in front of the window and he just... Ignores him. Ignores him completely. And he just goes nuts barking at him. Yeah, yeah he could care less. All right, so a little bit darker here. So Dave says it's probably wood from trees. Thank you, Dave. He and I are cut from the same world. I think, I think that is true. You're, uh, you're, you're we're, we're you're twins. Our, we're twins separated. Tw- yeah. I I think. I've gotten that gist. <laughs> Just twisted enough. 
We like we like it. We mm-hmm. like it. <laughs> it fits right in. Right. <laughs> Along with all the other unusual Part suspects. Of our tribe here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the three eighths inch angle now. So I've got pretty much my basic um, areas down, and I'm just going to use the um, black here. To fill in, just clean up any of this that I got over the top. What are you laughing at? No, I wasn't laughing. <coughs> you I was laughing. clearing my throat. Sorry. Ah. Nothing funny over here. Okay. go and then the inside of our guitar it's black pretty black but then there's just a little bit of something kind of right in here that we can see so just like a little hint of something on the inside of it by the end of that neck I would say probably get a little bit of that lighter gray and just kind of add just a little bit into that wet paint right there so give it a little something So while it's not out there yet, I don't think. <clears throat> what happened to my Patreon? A little thing? bit of white. What's not out there yet? <coughs> the uh, sorry. The traceable. For this, no, it, right. it's not out there yet. But yeah, we'll be doing it this afternoon and evening after the show. I like to do them ahead of time. It just didn't happen today. We're just trying to finish up that lemon video that I did. Something has happened to my Patreon. Uh oh. Logo thingamabobber. I got moved on my desktop to another folder or something. So anyways, the link's down below this video. It's patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Yep. <coughs> Traceables at the $2 level in 2021. And then you got bonus images and things like that. Yes. I am using the white on the tip here, and I'm going to go right along the top of this, just right there. It's just kind of blended that white in. See how I did that? Just had the black on my brush and then picked up just a little bit of white on the tip and then that way and then kind of brushed it out a little bit on the palette so that I could brush down here and it does the blend right there for me. The white part on this side. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow, we'll get some glaze, get some black, and mostly have it on the tip of the brush, so I'm going to just brush off this back end so that this front side of the brush has the most dark color. Let's see how I can do that, and then I can go up underneath this and add a shadow all the way down. Like that. And then we're going to do shadow right here. Mm. 
Okay. And we'll also shadow right here. this part of it and then flip my brush over and brush across this side too so I have that or I can kind of use my finger on both sides and just smudge it out but I just want kind of a dark carrot color right in the middle there and then down at the bottom here I'm gonna glaze up from the bottom and stop right about here where the light starts to hit it and then I can use a little bit of the light color And just lightly run it over the top of these areas where just a little bit brush out most of it. And I want it just right here where right there. curve pull down with a little bit of the darker color right there and I just need a little bit more contrast so this color and this color are too close right so we really can't see where the separation is on that line so I'm going to get the black on the tip of my brush and I'm going to come in here and really darken up this line right here coming up. That'll separate it out a little bit and then I can come across this way, separate it out that way as well. Like that. I can also add white behind it so I can add a lighter color behind it so that the value back here is a little bit dark, is a little bit brighter. Right there, where it's touching down on it. Okay, so now that just pulled it forward, right? So we've got a little bit darker there in that part, and then the, over the top is it's lighter. So anytime you've got something like that where it's just not quite showing up, that's what you can do. You can uh, change your values a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to get my white and my number one round here. And I'm going to start outlining my guitar and right to that there. And there's not anything right here, but there's some like little metal bits or something right there that I'm seeing. So I'm going to get a little bit of black and my, my white and just kind of tuck that off. What are you laughing at? The metal bits. 
<laughs> Technical terms here. Mm -hmm. You don't don't need to understand it. So it's fine. I'm not a guitar it's aficionado, artist, not, artist so it's speak. way over my head. Right. Now, this is probably going to be the most difficult part. So if you have like a Posca pen, something like this, you could use that or Molotow uh, acrylic pen um, that's white um, ink. You could use that to do this part. Um, but just say, hold your brush really close. Make sure that your paint's really fluid here. This is what's uh, going to make it a lot easier for me is having this fluid paint. My line got a little bit thick right there. And um, you can do it in small sections just as long as you kind of make sure that you're, you know, see how I'm doing. Um, make sure you start where you stopped. So overlap a little bit before you do your next one. Don't try to meet it up to right here. Just kind of go over the top. And that way you're going to continue that line where it needs to be and it gets a little bit thicker as it comes down around. I'm going to go through here and just smooth it out. it on its side like this so that I can do this whole line continually and have nothing kind of restricting my arm uh, is helpful too. So right here it's kind of going around the corner here so it's very very thin. And then it kind of thickens up. Actually no it's thin all the way down. I just looked at the picture. I want to keep it thin all the way down. And these fluid acrylics dry fast. I don't even have a time to stop. There we go. And this may be a little too bright, but we can always go back in and glaze back over it to darken it up so I'm not worried about the actual value of it yet. Just trying to get it on here bright and keep it thin. Now somebody could use the techniques like you did in the leopard videos to wash and add color to the guitar, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, if you wanted to do this in black and white and then you could um, glaze over, you know, color onto it, it'd look really good, I think. I'm gonna get a little bit of black and make a light gray. And use it on this side of the black. Now I want it to be uh, different, so I need to have it either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker than my, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit there. like this chat comes to <clears throat> almost a complete halt what so when you do stuff like this chat comes to almost a complete halt oh yeah <laughs> okay. that's great oh my gosh okay so don't mess wait. up Is that what it's called? Fretboard? 
sounds right. I know those are frets, so I'll go with that. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and use our ruler here. This will make it easier to get this on straight. Why not make it easier for ourselves, right? And make sure I have enough of my white on here. You can switch to a smaller brush if you want to. I want to be able to do that whole line without stopping if I can help it. So. Ta da! And then wipe that off. And do this side. Let me make sure that this is dry so I'm not touching anything wet here. Okay. And now, does it matter if you use the side of the ruler with inches or with centimeters? I don't think so. Okay. Just make sure. You may you may want to, you know, go along with your country code though, just in case. Yeah, I don't want to force anybody. From the European Union, you may not want to use the inches side. What? You want to you, No, I agree with you hundred percent. Or force anybody to use the metric system either. Vice right. versa. So it's your your choice. <laughs> oh shoot! So you see what happened there? I went. No, but no, but I'm reacting like I did. That white date. came under, underneath. It oh, seeped yeah, down underneath yeah. my ruler. Let me get it off while it's still wet. Ooh, come off! Okay. Right. I don't think I want to use the ruler again. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's because my paint was very fluid, so it just seeped up underneath it. If I was using a thicker paint, it wouldn't do that. But then if I was using a thicker paint, I wouldn't be able to get these thin lines. So it's kind of uh, catch-22 there. So if you need to do any, you know, touch-ups here, you can do that now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the black, burnt umber, white. Try to get a... Oh. Thankfully, that's in a black area there. I didn't have to go over any details. Um, use this color to do the uh, stripes here. So. How are we doing on time? Not too bad. Mm Just kind of fill in the rest of this with this color and go along that curve. Got a little bit in my black area there, so I'm gonna touch that up. This one would be a good Father's Day gift if you've got a dad that likes to, you know, play guitar or something. I think this this time of year I always try to kind of pick a project that I think would work good for, you know, different things. So Mother's Day I always do kind of a either flowers or something. We did flowers this year, and then for this one I, this year. I that so be good. <coughs> let's Father's be honest. Day. About fifty-one days of 
in 51 weeks of the year, there's Mother Day gift ideas. <laughs> in one week of the year is Father's Day gift right. ideas. Right. Exactly. Okay. There's like fishing or, you know, something else that... Tractor. For the guys. Right. Tank. Tank. Yeah. We, we got stuff. Fishing. Yeah, lots of fishing ones. Or by lots, I mean two. Just to be clear. <laughs> Does there need to be more? I just no. no. <laughs> just you get what you you know. Just to know you're what you're in for with our channel. You give me a lot of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't like flowers, you may not be at the right place. I, lo I always love it when people leave me comments like, enough with flowers. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> it's like, how did you find my channel? Because <laughs> that's pretty much all I like to paint. <laughs> it's like my favorite thing to paint. There may be flowers in this one. You never know. <laughs> you could add them. I could, I could find a place for them. I'm you would sure. stick them in the little hole there with the guitar. And there you go. Yeah. Good idea, actually. Okay, using the black here to clean that up. And then just a little bit right here where that um, comes down. Maybe a little shadow right there. Alrighty. Okay, and so the little lines along the outside of here. Could do a very thin line right here. All around the outside of what I just filled in. And then another line that is just very close to the edge. a little more tricky than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, I didn't think. But there's a lot of detail here that you could leave out. You don't have to put all this part. You could just, you know, do a simple circle around here, or maybe some stripes or something and be done. You don't have to go into this much detail. It's supposed to be fun, so don't make it more, diff you know, more so challenging that you don't enjoy it. So, um, does not have to look like mine to still be, you know, really cool. So, do as much detail as you're comfortable with. Okay, there we go. And then, using the black. There's these little, I'm trying to think if I should. Mm, let me use white on there. A little bit of the gray, but mostly like a pretty bright white here. And then I'm gonna go right in the middle of this, these two lines that I just did. Try to keep it the same distance. And it should meet up with the edge of this. So this whole side of it should be right up against that black. There we go. All right, and then the black now. And just do little little details in here. Little kind of rounded. And 
I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the darker color around the side of it. They look like little arrows or something almost. And here it doesn't, I don't know if it matters really. There's probably significance to it, so sorry if you're a guitar person. Faces, leaving the white. <clears throat> Oops, I got it. Now you zoomed in. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me to. I asked you to like five minutes ago. I did. Yeah. I was okay. You're checking your emails. for a post. Mm. Going back in here with the white and just kind of cleaning up. All right. I can go back and remember with my bright white and just dab in like a little bright white here and there. Just right in the middle. And then I'm going to let those dry and then we'll glaze over it a little bit maybe. All right, let's get my white down here. I'm going to fill in. Mm 
pretty easy way of doing these is to dip the bottom of your brush in and you can make a straight dot with the back of a brush just you know find a brush that's big enough to make this size dot but I'm not gonna do that because it it makes a big puddle of I would have to wait for it to dry before I could do anything else or otherwise I would put my hand in it knowing me so we're not gonna do that but it's an easy way of doing dots so Okay, and then get in the black, on the very tip of the brush, and right on this side, offset. clean up any of this with the black along the edge that you know where my wood tone came through do that now and this whole neck this whole thing is pretty dark and then down here there's some notches across from where the strings are going to be so all the way up until we get to about right in here. Now it goes up a little farther. Okay. shadow underneath this on here so just go along there and darken up that this side should already be a little bit darker just darken up that bottom edge of it I get a little bit more white here just gonna touch up right there okay and then do my little cross pieces so white and black, uh, light gray, and I'm going to go across my dogs once in them. He is so done with me working. I've been twice as much as normal I'm trying to get the kaleidoscope videos done so there's been a big lack of cuddling and things going on this is not right being very needy because mom's been home but not available this is really not good Okay, so I kind of stopped it just before the end there, and this was uh, I saw in the drawing, so this is not the right spacing, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. <laughs> it should be right. Okay, there we go. 
And then do our lines. So I'm gonna grab my metal ruler, maybe. Maybe it'll make our lines a little bit better. I'm gonna start from this side and let's I'm gonna do right here. What? I was wondering if you wanted to flip over the metal ruler because it's got that cork backing that lifts it from the. No, I don't want to scratch my paint. I'll be. It'll be all right. Okay. Thank you. Actually, this one goes right along the outside edge there. Uh, which brush are you using? It disappears. What? Which brush and are you using? Two aught liner. Check. Script liner, to be exact. Okay, so there. Slightly off white, not quite full white here. And just a little bit more. So I just mark the top and the bottom of the strings so that I could, you know, to draw all the strings that way. Okay, that's okay. Not. textured canvas I didn't really think that through because it's it makes it a little bit more difficult to do straight lines on a textured canvas <laughs> so you might want to use a smoother canvas <laughs> than I did here it's good for wood grain not so good for strings. lines yeah <laughs> strings <laughs> exactly all right let's do another Makes you kind of just want to play Freebird. <laughs> yeah, this canvas is kind of fighting these lines. It's not great. Not great. It wants to lift. Or it wants to you know, move, let's push my brush around because my brush is so fine. So, I mean, I, could, I guess I could, I could try doing it with my angle brush. Let me try and see how that does. I'll try one. Let's probably press my brush flat, really flat. But it'll, it'll keep it from wiggling so much when it goes over the hard areas because this brush is, it's got, you know, more solid. There we go. That's better. That's much better. So I definitely think that that's a better idea. Just as long as you keep it fine. Like the artist. <laughs> So, uh, real quick, while you're finishing that part up, mm -hmm. somebody said that uh, they have difficulty. Much better. They don't like how the chalk sometimes will affect the texture of the paint. Okay. 
and then also it's kind of sometimes hard to wash off. Uh, okay. And they can lift the color out. So do you have mm. any tips? Um, make uh, well. It sounds like maybe you're you, the be putting the chalk on a little thick. Um, if it's you know if it's washing off your paint, um, you might try a different brand of chalk. I found that the colored chalks are worse than the white chalk, so you might try that. Change to you know white chalk instead of the colored chalk, and then um, the la okay. So the last little bit here, and this is totally optional, but it really kind of I think will make a difference, is to put in a shadow. I know we've just done these lines, and now we have to do another one, but um, it's actually on this side of the lines, so right here. And you don't have to do them all because this is black back here. So you can just kind of touch where the line crosses over. So would you say that you would just chalk it up to experience on how to do that? Oh my gosh. No. I would not say that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say... This is a dad joke free zone here. <laughs> no, um, you know, I did that. I did a I did a mural with on a wall once with blue chalk, and <laughs> I, I had trouble, so I had to use the house paint to clean off the chalk marks. So I know what you're talking about. It it happens. So you know, you might just switch to a different. A different uh, thing altogether, like um, charcoal pencils, been pretty good. The white charcoal pencil that I've been using, I haven't found it to be too bad. Nothing's going to be perfect, though, you know, because you're. So I think that the but the thickness of your lines can make a difference. So you're just making sure that you're. I, I think that it's probably better to draw on paper and then, you know, transfer your drawing onto the canvas that way. I just think it's a cleaner look and you're not scratching and, you know, having to move things. Because when I, unless it's a really simple image, um, drawing it straight onto the canvas can be tricky. So you might try that just you know doing it on paper and then transferring it on with transfer paper and then that way you're not having the oops this side right here as well so here it's on this side I don't know why it's on the other side on the upper part but right just so well it's really on both sides of the string so I'm gonna so if it's doing that where like I just did it and you're it's completely disappearing that um, the white part then I have too much paint so just thin out your black so this should just kind of it should glaze it you should you know be tinting that color but it shouldn't be completely covering it and then turning it over and doing this side And probably my shadows are way too big. Let me try that again. I think those shadows were a little bit big. Well, and of course they're set in stone now. Let's just try that again. Do the white over the top. my small brush and do my shadows with that. The black.
<laughs> You're okay, Fitz Pickle. You can handle it. I'm almost done. It's really like a, having a two-year-old in the house. I do see a shadow. Yep. Okay, so on our thing here, there's a shadow coming along this side of it. And just where it's kind of coming close to the wood there. These ones that I did with the angle brush were a lot smaller so I would definitely do them all with this instead of the liner brush just if you're you know I think that if I was using a smoother canvas it would have been fine but these turned out to be pretty thick on the I just had to keep you know because it was the texture was pushing my pushing the brush around So I'm shadowing on both sides of the lines here, a little bit. And you can also um, you know, put a little shadow on her, little dots there if you need it. So we could have, um, you know, I've been thinking about it to make this a little bit easier maybe, we could have done a, a like a black line or like maybe a, um, faded black line so maybe a little bit of like a gray all the way up and then did the white on top of it so that it was you know shadowed on either side too it's another option I guess <coughs> let me bring this closer to this edge Did I miss anything? I feel like it might be something that I missed. I don't know. I'll detail this out a little bit better. <clears throat> Got my shadow here. So if you, you know, if you need to, um, if you've, if you don't have your shadow, like on this side of the thing here, you can add that right there. Uh, just a little bit of a shadow maybe. Right there. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. Oh, I need to do the trim on this side. So this side's got a little bit of that white trim too.
And then there's just a little bit of a darker on the inside. There we go. And he's a little bit, it's a little bit darker than the, um, you know, the uh, example ones. So if we want to, you can glaze with a little bit of the white. Um, just a thin wash. Rub it in. Just lighten it slightly. Now just be careful because you've already put your shadows in so you can't really do it where your shadows are supposed to go but you can go in some of the lighter areas of the guitar and add a little bit lighter tones here and there. <coughs> Super Cheddars today. The nice. first one was from Patty. She was demonstrating to somebody who asked if there was a tip jar. Oh, so thank you, Patty. So she said tip jar. <laughs> <laughs> then we had a donation from Leah Beachy. And there was no special comment. Uh, there was a cat emoji. Nice. And I think she had later said that uh, loved our work. Oh. And then there was a a uh, donation from Christy, who was the person who was asking about the tip jar. Thank you. And then we had one um, that yeah. came in yep. the other day. So thank you to Christy and to Leah Beachy and to Patty for their donations tonight. Thank you guys. And then we had Georgiana uh, donated uh, through PayPal. Yes. And just said thank you. No. Yeah, she had a she had a nice she had a long thing. Oh, okay. She's, but comment. I didn't I didn't yeah I didn't copy it, but I did read it. Thank you, Georgiana. Yes. All the way from Italy. <laughs> but thank you guys. That's that's it's uh, incredible. You guys are so sweet to us, and we, despite what Mark thinks, this is a awesome job. <laughs> I did not say it was a bad job. No, he didn't. He just said it wasn't a real job. <laughs> I said it beats having a real job. Exactly, which <laughs> infers what? <laughs> My so point like, exactly. Like, subscribe. <laughs> Check out over close to 500 videos at all different levels. <laughs> over 500 now. The link's down below this video to uh, buy supplies from the Brush Guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, five percent off with the code Angel of Fine Art. Then also links to Amazon, uh, social medias, all that good stuff. Facebook I'm gonna groups. use a little bit of light gray here on this lock here. I just kind of bring this out a little bit more.
This was fun. Man, it turned out really realistic. I didn't uh, necessarily intend it for it to be super realistic, but it did. It went there, so. I, I kind of messed up that angle right there. I don't really like that angle of the... I want to bring it out a little bit right here. And then I'm going to fix it with my, if I can find it. Just bring that closer to the edge there. There we go. that for two hours I think it took a lot That's longer exceptional. Than gonna... oh thank you honey mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna add a little shadow down here I just keep seeing little things so you know this is the time when I kind of finish the painting quote-unquote finish but then I you know I kind of take a step back and look at it because sometimes when you're like right in the middle of it you miss things and sometimes I'll notice things the day after I'm like ah oh, I wish I missed you know I wish I'd done that but um, I try to catch them all, but it's, you know, doing it live here and not having practiced it ahead of time, it's, you know, things fall through the cracks sometimes. So I'm going to just shadow the bottom edge of this guy right here a little bit, just all along here. Um, just a little bit. And that'll just kind of settle it in a little bit and make it a little bit more. I don't know. And then we can do the same thing up there a little bit, too, if we want to. Just right where it goes off the edge of the canvas. All right. I'm, for real, I'm done now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, guys, so much. Thanks to the Super Chatters and our Patreon folks who support us. Um, you guys are amazing. changed our lives. And uh, we uh, so appreciate you. So, all right. We will be back next Tuesday. And we'll have, what are we painting next Tuesday? I don't know either. I should know this. Ah, okay, yeah. So if you want, uh, if you want more information about the kaleidoscope, check out my social media, and you can also sign up for my newsletter. We already mentioned that, but. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Next week we're doing the palette knife. So that'll be good. We'll get your palette knives together. We're going to do a beach, ocean beach thing with some palette knives. So it should be a lot of fun. With and as they things. say, don't bring a brush to a palette knife painting. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Rest of your week and weekend. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.